Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Oxheart Gardening. It is officially the time of year when it is unwise to come out without a basket of some sort. Although it is not yet the season where I have to bring like three baskets out at a time. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, look how cute you are. Oh no. <laughs> Kata just ran off after something and startled poor Draco. Anyway, if you're new here, welcome. Um, I do this garden tour every single week and in it I talk about all the cool things going on in the garden, um, all the things that aren't going as well as I would like, and uh, what I'm going to do about that. I've got this massive um, path pumpkin probably now. Um, it is at the stage where it is just growing so fast. Um, don't yet know I, like, I won't know until it puts on fruit what exactly it is, but it is definitely putting on flowers. So we might have a better idea of what it is very soon. Here at the front of my tomato row, you can see things are already starting to look much more filled out than they did last week. Um, I've still got my uh, lemongrass here and I started putting in some ginger. I've got some here, some here. Just been tucking it in in different corners. This was started inside like... Um, three months ago, four, three, four months ago. It's been growing in rather large pots indoors for a while, but it was time for it to move out. Although if you live in a long growing season like I do, if you started by planting some ginger root from the store that um, had just sprouted in the ground, you would definitely still have time to get a harvest. Right here in this area, I have a few things that haven't come up. Uh, there was supposed to be some basil here. It got eaten and eventually died. It didn't come back. This is supposed to be a purple pole bean coming up. It still has a time to come up. And I forget what I planted here, but it was probably some herb and it never came up. Um, but we do still have some basils in between tomatoes. This one is still in the recovery phase, but it's looking pretty good. Garlic is still here right under the trellis, although it is getting ever closer to it being able to come out. Um, we're still not quite there yet, although this one, you see how most of its lower leaves have died back? This is one of the first signs that your garlic is getting about ready to harvest. Um, this one looks kind of small though, um, and none of the rest of them are really dying back like this, so I wouldn't take this as an indication that they're all ready. But maybe this one in particular is ready. The tomatoes, though, have started really taking off. That's why I've been carrying these clippers around. I feel like I can't come in here without the clippers because they keep making little um, suckers. Um, you'll also notice that I did put on the little seed saving baggies. I just put them on some random plants that had like flowers that were at about the right stage to go ahead and put the baggies on. But um, mostly what I've been doing is coming through here and pruning these things back. Um, like you can see here, took off a sucker here, took off a sucker here, um, <laughs> basically every single day I have to come in and take off suckers. It feels like they are just growing so fast right now. I did want to show you guys though, I found something very cool. I already have my first baby tomato. Look at that. There we go, coming into focus. Look at that baby tomato. I don't remember exactly what kind this is. I'd have to look on my sheet, but oh my goodness. Now I used to look at something like that and think, oh, I'm very close to having ripe tomatoes now. But um, honestly, I would still estimate at least four weeks until ripe tomatoes, maybe more, maybe, maybe six weeks. It takes them a long time to actually start um, reddening, but you know, the first one will come and then all these other ones that have been working on ripening in the meantime, will start ripening and then it will feel like a bajillion jillion tomatoes all at once. Fluffy bee friend. Right there on that onion flower, wow. That looks so huge compared to him. So in the second row here, you can see these lettuces that weren't flowering have definitely started flowering. This little top that that's making. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to let it make seeds or not. I could probably use some seeds, but it will take up a lot of space to go to seed. Like it looks small now, but this will be like five times the size, 
once it's uh, actually in the stage where it's making mature seeds. So I have to think about that. Uh, tomatillos, these are looking really, really good. Um, very happy with how these are shaping up, um, especially compared to um, how I've seen tomatillos go for me in the past. Have not seen any fruit setting yet though, but I think we're very close to that stage. Past those are my radishes that are going to seed, which are intermixing with my onions that have gone to seed. It's honestly really beautiful out here, but this, I'm gonna have to start cutting this back really soon because this is the stage right before jungle stage. <laughs> if y'all remember last year, um, jungle stage, uh, and well, actually almost every year I have some radishes that go into jungle stage um, and it is absolutely overwhelming. They will, like, like the lettuce I was showing you, like these could take over this whole space and make this not walkable for me if I don't keep trimming them back from the path. I gave myself a little motivation to keep up with it because I've got little baby eggplants under here that I cannot let get buried by the radishes. Further down, we have the potatoes. Still looking really good. Oh, little moth. Um, moth, butterfly, I don't know. What are you? I feel like I should know. Anyways, um, got a little bit more ginger back here. Still these onions in the middle that will be coming out very soon, actually. If you look over here, these ones have already started to flop. Um, I think most of the ones that didn't go to seed actually have flopped. So it's getting really close to time to harvest these onions. And the ones that flowered aren't really going to flop because that center stalk is so stiff. Um, but otherwise, when an onion is about ready to harvest, it will just flop over the top. And at that point, the bulb really starts to uh, balloon out. And then it is time to harvest. So on the other side of the second row, I have a couple of peppers and mostly eggplants planted along here all the way up to the edge of the potatoes. I have even more eggplants this year than last year, um, which I'm doing because I want to roast them. Um, I last year started making baba ganoush and ivar, um, which if you don't know ivar, A-J-V-A-R. It's like a Serbian red sauce that is roasted red peppers and eggplant, um, and it is so good. But um, I liked those so much that I wanted to have more. So I'm actually growing larger, like roasting sized eggplant than I did last year. Cause I really just had like small eggplants and I had so much of them that I had to start roasting them because I needed more ways to use them. But I liked that so much. Now I'm pivoting to have more for that kind. But I had six eggplant plants last year. And this year I have, I think at least 10. Um, I am almost doubling my eggplant production, so this is going to be crazy. Um, I might regret it, but when I'm in the middle of winter and I have so much frozen baba ganoush to go through, I'm going to be very happy. Check out this beautiful variegated nasturtium. I tried to plant quite a few of these, but this is the only one that made it. Um, it's going to be so beautiful. I'm going to have to make sure I save lots of seeds off of this this year. Oh, look at that. That is a bean sprouting. Oh, look, there's another one. My, I had to play a second round of beans. It looks like they're finally coming up. Hopefully they don't get eaten again because last time they came up to about that stage and then something came along and ate them down to sticks. Um, and I know that that thing that is eating things down to sticks is still here because look at this marigold. This was a big fluffy marigold like two days ago. Whatever has been eating them is relentless. And I think it's super funny that the marigolds are like the most likely thing to be eaten because um, everybody's like, oh, plant marigolds in your garden. It'll help um, deter pests. And I'm like, oh, I think it's attracting a marigold pest. <laughs> um, this pest also really likes basil. Um, in all seriousness, I don't actually know what marigolds are good for as far as pest resistance. Um, I haven't looked into the research, but that is something I've been very interested in. So I think there'll be a video soon on exactly what marigolds can and can't do for your garden. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. If we take a look at the trellises, my peas have gotten really tall 
and I skipped harvesting them for just a couple of days and all these ones that I've been harvesting small for like stir fry have just gotten way too big for that already. Also check out the difference in the pod shape between the ones I just showed you and these ones. These are telephone pole peas, I'm pretty sure. Um, they're very different pod shape than these other ones. So the purple look like this and then there's green ones around here that are pretty much exactly that same shape. Here we go. Very interesting. So over here, um, I had planted squash and I really thought that this was a squash seedling based on its first two leaves, um, but they were really delicate, but they were the right shape. Um, and it was a squash I'd never grown before, so I thought maybe. But now looking at the second set of leaves, I'm thinking this might be the blue butterfly pea that I planted. I planted a bunch of them to kind of entangle with the squash that I put here. Um, but this is the only one that has come up, so I should really replant those. Something about the base of these trellises this year has been really hard to germinate stuff. I haven't had trouble before, um, and I cannot give you a good reason as to why I'm having a little bit of extra trouble now. Um, but the best thing I can do is keep replanting, and if it gets bad enough, I might bring in a little bit of potting soil to um, put like a, a top inch of potting soil over the top of this area and then plant my seeds in that and see if that helps a little bit. Oh my goodness, so looking back at this butterfly pea, um, I thought this thing behind it was an onion because I have some red onions, but this is actually a garlic starting to bulb up um, a little sideways, <laughs> um, but that's a good sign. Good to see that. Yes, these garlic are um, kind of massive for regular garlic, so if your garlic's not that big, don't worry. This is um, Dixon soft neck garlic. It is a true garlic, not an elephant garlic. Those are an allium, but they are not a true garlic. Um, but these, these are, um, and you can get them from the Experimental Farm Network. Um, they're only available seasonally and kind of limited, but if you keep an eye out, you might be able to snag some. All right, behind the trellises is my fava beans, some of my volunteer sunflowers, um, which are starting to look a little bit more like they might be making flower heads at this point. Um, I've noticed these little ants all over them. Um, I'm pretty sure they're over my sunflowers every year, and I still haven't figured out exactly what it is they're doing on them. They don't seem to really be hurting them, um, but it's hard to tell. Maybe they're a leaf cutter and they're just like taking little bits, but if they were, they might be taking more than this. I don't know. Anyway, my fava beans are looking really good. Look at these things. I've got them this size everywhere. Um, and this is not quite yet ready to pick, but man, I am so excited. There are a ton of these in here. And then I still got my little baby uh, hot peppers all throughout here. Probably have to start clipping back this sunflower though so it doesn't um, fall on them or um, choke them out too bad. Um, yeah. So in this last row, I did finally take out most of my lettuces. They were overgrown, not tasty anymore. These two I left because I was like, mm, do I need seeds? I don't know. Still debating. Uh, meanwhile, this massive sunflower, well, that one doesn't look like it's making a flower head yet. Um, but the rest of this area, I'm probably gonna fill in. This is gonna be corn, um, which I need to get planted very soon, but I might start pulling out onions in this area first and then go ahead and get corn started in here. And these onions might be first to go all the way along the row anyway, because as you can see, the way the wind blows, they're blowing directly onto where my peppers are. So just a quick glance over here at the raised beds. Um, they're looking largely the same. Lavender is looking great. Oh, that is, that is a tree trying to grow in here. Oh. Well, maybe I'll come back later and dig out that big seed. I did finally cut back this thyme plant to make room for the Mexican tarragon, which has been very happy with its new, um, new room. Carrots over here still going strong. Starting to get little baby carrots in there. Catnip is 
still alive, but um, very clearly, uh, regularly sat upon and munched on. Um, meanwhile, the licorice mint next to it is getting huge, um, and the peppermint is starting to really take off. Like, I could probably start harvesting this by now. I've got some chamomile over here that is being slow, but definitely making progress. And this parsley that had gotten eaten and um, is now coming back. I've also got this kale that is getting way too big for right here. Um, I might pull it out soon, but it hasn't gone to seed yet. Um, so it's still like been good to eat, just not as sweet as like kale that's gone through a freeze. And then my nasturtiums, which I thought were just experiencing a little bit of transplant shock, seem to actually have been stunted by all of it. Um, not exactly sure why. Um, other things in here, like these lettuces, are actually doing really great. Um, so it's hard to say. And this nasturtium down here is doing pretty great as well by comparison. Alrighty, let's take a look at the berry patch. I've got this one blueberry that almost fruited, and then we had a late freeze. You can still see the remnants of the little frozen blueberries. <laughs> um, but otherwise this plant looks really good, so I'm not too worried about it. And the strawberries, man, I've been picking so many strawberries. I have made multiple batches of jam now, um, and they seem to be finally slowing down. These are supposed to be June bearers, and um, they, they've been acting like ever bearers. I mean, look, they're still putting on flowers. I'm also excited to show you that we are finally getting ripe blackberries uh, here and there, um, which means that all of these pink ones that you see are gonna be ripe very soon. And I'm gonna have like way more blackberries than I know what to do with. Oh, look at those. Those are so pretty. Raspberries too have really picked up. Um, I picked about like the equivalent of two store-bought cartons of raspberries yesterday. Um, and I can even come back out here early today and find like probably at least half that many more that are currently ready to go. Mm. Even the underripe ones, I feel like they're still sweeter than store-bought raspberries. Same with the strawberries too. Can pick them underripe and they're still really delicious. Look at my rosemary trying to survive in there. I did not realize <laughs> that I was going to be crowding you some. Oh, there's a cat down there too. Hi, Kata. You see her right there. <laughs> um, yeah, I did not realize that I was going to be crowding out this rosemary bush this much um, because I didn't realize that the raspberries were going to do this thing where they put up all these new shoots from their roots. All right, guys, the wind is picking up out here, um, so sound quality not going to be great anyway, but that's pretty much all there is to see. So um, thank you guys so much for uh, hanging out with me today for coming along on the garden tour. And um, if you're new here, this happens every single Wednesday. So um, go ahead and hit subscribe uh, so that you don't miss the next one. And if you wanna catch up, I'll leave that playlist up here. Until next time, happy gardening, guys.